Hey everyone, it's uh, Joseph from the Maximalist Podcast here, and uh, just like we promised during the podcast, I was going to do a short demonstration of this uh, Behringer MIDI, MIDI controller uh, that I actually have hooked up to Lightroom, and um, is really neat because, like we mentioned on the podcast, uh, all these knobs are hooked up into picture parameters, meaning that I could twiddle these, and they actually change some part of the photo. Um, I guess first things first, though, like what is this thing? So um, MIDI is a stands for musical inter musical instrument digital interface, and it's just I guess it's just developed as a standard for you know um, electronic controllers to interface with the computer. Uh, the clever folks at MIDI two or the clever guy at MIDI two LR uh, figured out how to kind of translate those MIDI commands that are coming off the controller um, that the computer picks up. Uh, into a plugin that will allow you to manipulate uh, parameter, photo parameters in Lightroom. So this particular unit is the Behringer X-Touch Mini USB MIDI controller. This sells for about $59.99 uh, on Amazon. I got this particular one from B&H. Um, and uh, really, mine is kind of strange I'll get into it a little bit later but um, this will usually connect to the laptop or your computer through a USB just a USB um, cable uh, if you've seen Russell's video he basically has kind of like the big bad daddy version of this guy that has a bunch of sliders and faders and um, encoder knobs but this guy is I like it because it's really portable I end up doing a lot of my editing in cafes around town so I can't it'd be really inconvenient for me to have to find, uh, you know, have to use a MIDI controller that actually plugs into the wall. But this one, uh, if ignore this battery pack I have here, it's usually just powered by the USB bus, um, by the, uh, that's it's of the computer it's plugged into. So just to demonstrate, uh, how this kind of works on the podcast, we made a big deal about getting a MIDI controller that has encoder knobs or motorized faders. Uh, the motorized faders are going to be well uh, demonstrated in Russell's video. Uh, and then here, I actually kind of like prefer the knobs. Um, and in this case, if you see, there's like a kind of like a corona or ring around each one of these knobs. Uh, and that actually indicates um, the position of that picture, that particular, whatever picture element or parameter that I assigned to it. So in this case, um, hopefully you can see this. Let me check. Yeah, so in this case, of uh, this far left knob here, I have assigned to exposure, this one to manipulate the white slider, this one to manipulate my shadows, and so on and so forth. Um, I also have these bu these couple rows of buttons linked to you know going to the next or previous photo, um, rating up or rating down. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I mean, it's really you can make it do whatever you want, more or less. Um, so. Just to give you a short demonstration, uh, so let's, I have these photos from a recent gig here, and I guess the important thing to key, on, key in on, on here is to just see how the the position of the LEDs change in relation to me switching the pictures around. So all the photos have, you know, slightly different settings um, on the sliders in Lightroom, and those settings are actually reflected on the LED rings on these knobs so that uh, no matter what picture I go to, so you can probably see that uh, right there. So you can see that the between this photo and this photo, the there's changes in exposure, whites and shadows pretty much, and a couple of other things. So that's really important because if you notice um, the knobs, uh, so what an encoder knob will let you do is that no matter where you are, where where the, say where the exposure is set to on whatever photo you're you're trying to work with. Um, as soon as you start touching the knob, it's actually going to be moving or changing the photo relative to what the exposure is in this case is set to on that photo. Um, if you don't have enco encoder knobs or motorized sliders, what happens is that like, like in the podcast we were saying, let's say, let's say this photo was at, um, you know, plus one exposure and the next one right after it, was um, zero. So in this photo, if I set the knob to where it is for plus one, 
and then I switch to a photo that has uh, an exposure of plus zero, um, and it's just a standard MIDI knob, not an encoder knob, I would have to move the the knob to zero the zero point before it started making any changes uh, to the photo. So w the previous MIDI controller I have, which was the Korg Control 2, uh, behaved this way because those were just standard MIDI knobs that had physical, actually, endpoints. Um, in this case, in that case, I would have to basically pass the point that the in Lightroom that the photo was actually adjusted to before moving the knob or whatever would actually enact any changes. And um, as you can imagine, that caused like a lot of overshooting when you're wanting to make fine adjustments, which like slowed everything down and made the overall experience really kind of untenable and unenjoyable. Uh, but, you know, having encoder knobs totally changes the game because I can switch to whatever photo I want. And I know that as soon as I start moving that knob, it's moving um, relative to whatever point it was set to previously. So there's no guesswork. So if I move it two clicks to the right, then it's going to move the exposure uh, two clicks to the right or two clicks to the left, whatever. Um, so yeah, so like we said on the podcast, look, if you're gonna go this route, look for any MIDI controller that has encoder knobs and uh, motorized faders. Um, so just a little bit about this setup here with the X-Touch Mini I have here. As you notice, it, you might have noticed it's actually wireless, uh, kind of wireless. Uh, what I have is, so this is where it actually hooks, this is the USB port on it. And from this USB port, I have it plugged into a Yamaha, I forgot what it is, but basically it's a Yamaha little USB gadget that converts um, USB MIDI into a Bluetooth signal that my laptop can pick up. And this unit here, this Yamaha USB dongle thing, is actually powered by this um, little, this small uh, power bank. Uh, this can be anything. You can get them for like five bucks on Amazon. This one happens to be from PNY. Uh, I would say that the important thing here is that it actually has a small switch or some way for you to turn it off so that you can just kind of turn the whole unit off. Uh, and then from there, it's, re it was, it's really simple. You just uh, have your computer pick up the uh, MIDI to Bluetooth uh, adapter and uh, you're ready to go. So I'll just kind of fiddle around a little bit more and you can kind of see how um, these parameters are moving around. Some more than others, just because uh, some pictures that are side by side are more or less different from each other at di in different degrees. Oh, that one's quite dramatic. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please drop us a line at our Facebook page at facebook.com slash The Maximalist Podcast, or throw us an email at uh, The Maximalist Podcast at gmail.com. Um, I hope that this has been informative. Uh, apologize in advance for the, the picture quality and uh, the audio, but we just, I just wanted to get this uh, kind of demonstration done quick and dirty. Thanks a lot.